It doesn't have to be a question about the book. I mean, uh, you could, you know, need advice or... Um, <laughs> they're very empathetic people. They could help you. So I've got another question. Um, you say you it was written off of an outline Joss gave you. Um, yeah. And I was just wondering how much of his uh, book's biography was in place during the production of the show and movie? I don't really know the answer to that, but I imagine that it was all there. Um, you know, Joss has a ton of stuff in his head that isn't on the page or on the screen, and I imagine that he had this sort of basic history <clears throat> worked out for all, all his characters, but uh, for book, definitely. Cool. Zach, I'm wondering if you ever get your song from Dr. Horrible stuck in your head, because my kids sometimes walk through the door going, I just beat up a theater nerd. <laughs> nice. Are you sure that has anything to do with me? <laughs> um, I do get it stuck in my head. I get all those songs stuck in my head. It's annoying. It is annoying. We keep it in the car. We keep the commentary in the car more oh, yeah. than the actual soundtrack to the show. Nice, nice. So we're, we're nerds. <laughs> Out of the secondary characters in the show, not the main cast, who's your favorite and why? Um, of the people on board, Serenity? Or? No, actually, the, the, the supporting cast, the people around that, from okay. various worlds and such. Hmm. Whether or not they have a, if they're in a recurring role or just a single episode. Um... I like uh, uh, Mrs. Reynolds. What's uh, Christine Hendricks? Yo Sap Bridge. What's that? Yo Sap Bridge. Yes. <laughs> um, I like her a lot. Um, this guy, Jubal Early, is pretty awesome. I mean, in a terrible way. He's not, not a role model or anything. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember his name. The guy with the bowler hat. Oh, yeah. Badger, yes. I, I knew he was some sort of critter. <laughs> Actually, I was wondering, since uh, in The Shepherd's Tales, uh, you're working in an established universe with very specific things that had been in the show and in the movie and all that, how free did you feel to sort of make up your own details? Uh, in the case of the writing, you know, terminology and jargon, the way people spoke, and in terms of the art, the way things look, like spaceships, weapons, buildings, things like that. Do you have any reference for that? Or do you have to approval for certain things? Well, I didn't, um, in terms of how people spoke, I didn't think I could stray at all from, you know, the characters that everybody knew already. I didn't feel like I could stray at all from how they spoke. I didn't want to do that. Um, one thing that was nice about the story is so little of it takes place in the, um, in Serenity. So there weren't all those rules and everything and um, so I you know I got it, we were free to invent a lot um, but I certainly would never want to contradict anything that was in the show yeah as for art I mean anything that was tied to the show or the, or the uh, other serenity movie I tried to get it as close to you know, screen accurate as I could, whether it was, you know, a gun or, or the interior, you know, the interior of a ship or whatever. Um, but I mean, there's, there really was barely any of that stuff in there. So most of it was just out of my head, um, while just trying to keep in the headspace of, you know, that shared universe. Um, I know, but I did read all of the, you know, the companion books for the for the TV show and the movie and tried to add any of the little details that I read from those books. Like, one of, there's a, a weird little thing in there that I, I had to toss in. One of the uh, costume designers really wanted to put a flamingo shirt on Jane. Uh -huh. So I, I put that in the book. <laughs> it's like, you never got to do it, I'll do it for you. Is, uh, I'm sure you get this fairly frequently, but any advice for aspiring writers and artists looking to break into the comic industry? Um, just keep doing it. I mean, if, if you love it, then it's, it's bound to come around. Um, I started doing conventions when I was 12 um, and, you know, talking to editors and writers and artists and you just, 
you just needed to get out there and start talking to people. And if it's what you really want to do, it's bound to happen. I mean, you, your passion will get you through it. If um, It's not the easiest industry to get into, um, but I think if you have enough drive to push yourself to keep trying, then it's, you know, it'll, it'll happen for you. And networking. <laughs> I think that's sound advice. I would do that. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks so much Everybody for coming out. Thank you to the Hollywood Theater, Dark Horse, Dirt City Comics, um, Excalibur, Dark Horse Comics, and everybody. Uh, don't go too far. We are having a signing right across the street at Hollywood Tifa, and it has the magic ingredients, which is free food and free beer. And then, of course, these lovely... Um, it's Firefly-inspired food, and I might have made it.